Hello, everyone. I'm Jerry D'Ambrosio, and it's my pleasure to bring to you this week's special presentation. So with record high inflation and aggressive Fed raising interest rates to try to bring it down, supply chain disruptions, record high gas prices, the war in Ukraine, you know, the first half of 2022 has been pretty brutal. If the second half of 2022 and beyond is anything like the first half, the task at hand becomes how do we best position ourselves to make money if the market continues to fall. And in previous special presentations, we've talked about contra ETFs as an instrument to use in a falling market. You can also trade options, bearish option trades, put options. Those are also effective instruments in a falling market. Today, we're gonna to talk about short selling. So first, let's talk about what exactly does it mean to short a stock? So here's an example of shorting a stock. So it says, let's say an investor sells short 500 shares of XYZ stock, which trades at $20 per share and collects $10,000 from the transaction. So what you're doing, you're going to your broker, you're doing it all online, obviously, anyway, but you're directing your broker to loan you 500 shares of stock XYZ. Now, generally, the broker will uh, have those amount of shares in their inventory. They may have to go out someplace else and get them. That doesn't matter to you. You're directing them to loan you 500 shares of stock at a certain price. Trades at $20 per share. The proceeds of that transaction are deposited into your account. Let's say that XYZ stock falls to $15 per share. In that scenario, the investor could repurchase the 500 shares of the stock for $7,500, and that's called buying to cover. You're selling those shares, those 500 shares out on the open market. You initiate that short position. Remember, you're selling something that you don't own, but you initiate the short position. If the stock price falls, which you hope it does, you're able to buy back those shares and keep the difference between what you initially collected and what the share value is at the time that you close the position. Once that transaction is completed and, and the XYZ stock loan is repaid, the investor has pocketed a profit of $2,500 from the short sale. So after you, again, it's called buy to cover. After you close that position, you return the 500 shares to the broker and you keep the difference between the value of the shares when you initiated the short position and the value of the shares when you close the position. So now that we understand kind of the basics of shorting a stock, let's go through what I've laid out as five simple steps to shorting. Step number one, you have to open and fund a margin account. That margin account, those funds in that account serves as collateral. When you buy a stock long, the most you can lose on that position is what you put in. The stock price goes to zero, you lose everything. With a short stock position, theoretically, your losses are unlimited. The stock can just keep going up. So to cover losses, the funds in that margin account serve as that collateral. For example, if you short a stock at 10 and it goes up to 12 and you want to close that position and cut your losses, well, you sold it at 10, it's now worth 12. Where is that $2 per share going to come from? It comes from that margin account. Step number two identify short sale candidates. Number one, make sure the market is falling. Red light in the price column of the color guard, DEW down situation, confirm down, RT kicker combo down, MTI below one. All of these are situations that we would look for to short stocks. It's the total opposite, right? If we were looking to go long. If we were looking to buy, we want a green light in the price column of the color guard. We want a DEW up or a confirmed up or the MTI above one. So we're just flipping that market timing scenario over. Once we identify a falling market, the next step is to favor overvalued stocks with poor fundamentals that are falling in price. The complete opposite of what we would look for if we were buying. We would want to buy undervalued stocks that are safe and that are rising in price. And I'm going to go through some 
uh, shorting searches within the VectorVest program that find these types of stocks. Next is you want to identify your entry and exit before entering the trade and make sure you're not risking any more than 1% to 2% of the total portfolio capital on any single position. Just some basic pillars of good money management. Step number three, make sure you know all the rules and fees associated with the transaction. Firms have different rules and borrowing fees, so it's very important that we understand what they are before step number four. Initiate a short stock position. So sell short, X amount of shares, and you want to make sure that you're using limit orders as well. That gives you better control of your cost basis. And then finally, step number five, if the stock price falls, buy the stock back at a lower price, pocketing the difference. Once that transaction is complete, you return the shares to the lender and you do pay interest on the loan as well. So there are again some fees that are associated with selling stocks short. If you have to buy the stock back at a higher price to cover losses, those losses are covered by the collateral in that margin account. So let's go through these steps. I'm not going to go through step number one. That's on you, right? Open up a margin account. You could do that right from your broker's website. It can all be done online. Just fill out the application uh, to open up a margin account. Once you do that, step number two, remember, is make sure the market's falling. Well, the market's been falling now for about seven or eight months. Now, we're looking at a market timing graph over the last six months. Price of the VVC at the top, MTI, by the so ratio and the RT. For the most part, for the last six months, all of our market timing indicators have been below one. I'm gonna pull us back a little bit further just to kind of take a look at some back data here. Here was the all time high back on November 9th of 2021. I'm gonna put our confirm calls on. We got a confirmed down signal on November 22nd, 2021, and another one recently on April 12th of 2022. Those are good shorting opportunities. Those are signals that, you know, really anyone who is looking to short a stock can follow. Now, there may have been opportunities to short prior to those confirmed down signals. Maybe the DEW signal turned down. In this case, it turned down a few days or a day before. MTI crossing from above one to below one. That happened about a week or so before the confirmed down, April 6th. All of our market timing indicators are below one, right? Underlying downtrend, BSR at 0.51, RT of 0.91. So there are opportunities to short. What I would focus on, the indicator really that I would focus on is the MTI. I really hesitate shorting stocks in an underlying uptrend. Look, I know we're going to get pullbacks in an underlying uptrend, but those pullbacks are generally shorter lived. So I really hesitate to short in an underlying uptrend. I wait for that confirmed down call. I wait for the MTI to go from above one to below one. And then I start just to change my directional bias and my approach to making money. It goes from a bullish approach to a primarily bearish approach. Okay. Now this confirmed down call here is what we're going to use today as I go through a few examples. April 12, 2022, great opportunity to start shorting. The market had been falling for a couple of weeks prior to that confirmed down. MTI below one, buy to sell ratio below uh, 0.5, RT at 0.91. So when we go into the Unisearch tool here in a moment, I'm going to run some really historically effective shorting scans. Now I'm going to run it, not all the way to current, and I want to do that because you could see that the rally that we had off of the May 12th low was a pretty significant one, lasted for about a month. MTI was at 0.37, buy to sell ratio was at 0.06. We had a nice rally that would have caused you to close some or if not all of those short positions that you took at the confirmed down. So what I want to do is I want to see what our max profit potential was from the confirmed down to the bottom, again, knowing that during this market rally, you're likely covering those short positions or what you're doing is you're applying you know really a solid risk management plan to what to do during these situations now one that you always want to consider never give back the, more than 50% of your profit okay that's something that you should always have in your 
money management or risk management plan. Never give back more than 50% of your gains. And if you would have held all the way through to current, you likely would have done that. So we're going to run a quick test from April 12th to May 12th to see what our max profit potential uh, was with some of these shorting scans that I'm going to go through here in a moment. Now, when we buy stocks, we want to outperform the market. So if the market goes up 10%, I want to do better than that. I want to make 15%, 20%, whatever the case may be. You want to outperform the market. Well, if the market falls, I want to do better than what the market does. So for example, if the market goes down 10%, I want to make more than 10%. right? I want to make 15%. I want to make 20%. Any amount of money made in a falling market is fine. With the VectorVest's market timing system and trend analysis Along with our stock selection, our stock analysis, and rank analysis, we're really able to put probability not only of a successful trade on our side, but really blowing away the market performance. So let's go back to the, or go to the Unisearch tool. I have our date here at April 12th. That was the confirmed down. And I'm going to go into our searches short folder. And I'm going to start with one of my favorite shorting searches called Worst Stocks Above 20. I just ran that search as of April 12th. Basically what the search finds are stocks above 20 bucks with an average volume greater than 100,000 shares. Their recommendation has to be a sell. And the sort is VST ascending. VST ascending. So let's see what we have here. Just ran the top 10 stocks. And we can see all of these stocks are grossly overvalued. Boy, if I was able to sell something for $48 and it was worth six, I'd be all on board, right? Poor fundamentals. RV, RS, well below one. So uh, no upside potential over the next one to three years. Poor safety rating. Remember, we're not buying, we're shorting, so that could work out in our favor here, right? Relative timing, all below one. VSTs are below one. All have sell ratings. Look at those comfort index scores, well below one as well. So these are the types of stocks that I would consider shorting in a falling market. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a quick test from April 12th to May 12th. That was the bottom. And these stocks fell on average about 36%. The VVC fell 11%. 10 winners and no losers. Remember, we want the stock's price to fall, right? So all of these stocks fell, 10 winners and no losers. That was our max really profit potential of 36%. And that rally that occurred right after April 12th would have caused you to close and, and take some profits on these short positions. Worst case scenario, you give back half, you're still walking away with 18%. That is worst case scenario. And again, with good risk management guidelines in place, you're not going to give back 50% uh, of these gains. So fantastic performance here. These are the types of stocks that you want to favor. Overvalued, risky that are falling in price. There is another type of stock that we would consider shorting when the market's going down. Everything that I am talking about here all depends on the market. If the market's falling, I'm not saying that you could short, short any stock. I don't like to short good companies. The Apples, the Microsofts, the Googles, I don't like to short those companies. The undervalued stocks with the good upside potential, their rel relatively safety investments, even if their RT scores are below one and they're in downtrends, again, we're trying to put probability in our favor. Shorting bad stocks like this gives you that edge over you know shorting some of those better companies. So a search that we have, and I'm going to talk about uh, the the type of stock here. One of the searches, another shorting search that I like is called Ballistic New High Short. You guys are familiar with this one. This is part of the Midas Touch Goes Ballistic trading system that Steve introduced uh, last week or, or the week before. So I'm going to run that search as of April 12th. And let's take a look at some of the stocks here. Well, the first thing that jumps out to me, look at the RT scores. These stocks are uh, have RT ratings well above one. So these stocks are in very strong uptrends. However, for the most part, we're looking at some overvalued companies here, aren't we? For the most part, there are some exceptions. Now, this what's important about looking at the stocks in the list is for this example here, this reason here, Boyle, this is a bullish natural gas leveraged ETF. I'm not going to short a bullish ETF. So let's take that out of the equation here. I'm going to just highlight 
all of the other stocks in this list. Again, I'm not going to short boil, so I'm going to eliminate that from my uh, potential candidate list. Let's quick test those nine stocks from April 12th to May 12th. 26% with nine winners and no losers. The market went down 11, so we're you know outperforming the market quite a bit. So again, a quick test just gives you a nice baseline from point A to point B, from you know when the market began to fall to when it stopped falling. What was our max profit potential? Again, gives you a real nice baseline. 26% here with these, uh, you know, overvalued high flyers that when the market begins to really show weakness, these poor fundamental companies that have been enjoying the ride along with everybody else during an up market, they tend to fall the fastest. So these are some really sh uh, good shorting opportunities. Now, so one of the bullet points in step number two was to identify your entry and exit before the trade. So what I would do with this list is I would look at the charts first. We always talk about follow through. Okay, we always talk about follow through. How important follow through is when you're buying. We want to make sure that the stock is continuing to move higher, continuing to move in your direction before placing the trade. Make sure the market is also continuing to move higher as well. Well, if you're shorting a stock, you want the price of the stock to continue to fall. You want that downside follow through after identifying the setup, after running your scan. So the hard right edge here on uh, first stock VERU is April 12th. This scares me. This is a biotech company likely skyrocketed recently here on news. I hesitate shorting a stock, a biotech company like this, especially after they reported favorable news, news that the market liked, whether it's a favorable or successful phase three trial or FDA approval, for example. So these types of factors are important in your cherry picking process as opposed to, hey, just taking the top 10 stocks. Remember, these stocks are already rising in price. I really want to look at the charts here with this particular scan to make sure I'm getting in at a good price, to make sure I'm not shorting a stock that's rising in price. Because remember, the RT ratings are really high. So I would hold off. I wouldn't short VERU. We talked about Boyle. I'll skip over that one. So here's BRCC. Here's the relative timing. Let me just zoom in here. Hard right edge is April 12th. The stock had been skyrocketing, right? Hard right edge, we're looking at uh, a new high. What I'm seeing here is a bearish divergence, a slight bearish divergence between the price of the stock and relative timing, right? The price is going ballistic. Went from about 15 to 35 in the matter of about a month. The relative timing, I know it got to almost two. I know it can't go much higher than that, but it never went above that 1.88 score that we saw back here on March 25th. You would think that the RT indicator would have hit two as price went from 20 to 35, but it didn't. It stayed at that 188 range. So that tells me that the trend, even though it's up, is weakening here a little bit. And what's really clear here, or standing out to me, is this bearish candlestick formation called the dark cloud cover. That's as of April 12th. Remember, that was the day that we ran the search, the day of the confirmed down. So at least here, I'm seeing a sign of a reversal. Okay, I look for follow through the next day, and I'm all set to take on that short position. I wanna make sure that I'm getting that downside follow through before taking the short trade. Okay, so that's something that I would look for. Let's go to the next one. All right, here's IPI. Stock is kind of moving sideways over the last three days. It's, again, in a nice uptrend. I like how volume is drying up over the last couple of days. I would really wait for, again, not only downside follow through, but in this particular case, maybe going below the lowest low over the last three days or so. I think that might be a good entry to take on a short position. So let's look. Stock price continued to move higher the next day. Continued to move higher the day after. Boy, aren't you glad you waited for follow through. You didn't just blindly take the short position. You waited for that downside follow through. We didn't get it. Okay, so here, I'm liking also how volume is drying up even though price is rising. But as of the hard right edge here, April 19th, I see a bearish Harami. That is a bearish reversal signal. I'm also seeing a bearish divergence too between RT 
and the price of the stock. Even though, again, we're at 2.00, but we were at 2.00 here when the price of the stock was at about 102. The stock price rose to 120 and the RT actually fell to 1.86. So that tells me, look, we're in, a, we're in an uptrend, but the uptrend is losing gas, kind of running out of gas. Bearish Harami as of April 19th, follow through the next day. Now I'm ready to take on the short position. Okay, let's go back to April 12th. We're going to go through some examples here because I think it's important to understand what to look for in terms of follow through. Okay, next stock. All right, BTU, new high, new five month high. Stock is rising. I'm going to wait for some downside confirmation again, maybe lower if price moves lower than the low of the last two or three days here. We didn't get it. Price continued to rise, continued to rise. Very important to wait for follow through. Seeing a little bit of a reversal signal here. I'm okay to now think about taking the short position. I wanna make sure that price is continuing to move in my direction. Okay, next one. Here's CRU, Comstock. So as of the hard right edge, April 12th, that's a shooting star. That's a bearish candlestick reversal signal. It's also a gravestone doji. Stock has been on a tear. I need to see signs of a reversal before taking the trade. So let's move forward. Don't get it on the next day. Don't get it the day after. Definitely don't get it the day after uh, that day on April 18th. All right, here's a potential reversal signal. A bearish Harami as of April 19th. No follow through the next day, but I'll hang in there and see if I get downside follow through the day after. There I did. I'm okay with taking on that short position. It looks like price is failing to make a new high and moving in my direction. And you can see that was all she wrote at that point. Okay, let's go back to our trade date of April 12th. Next stock. All right, another one. EQT, rising. Pretty good volume. I'm going to wait for a reversal signal. Don't get it on the 13th. Don't get it on the 14th. Don't get it on the 15th. And there we go. April 19th, another bearish Harami. No follow through the next day, but there the following day we got follow through. And again, that would be the opportunity to open up a short position. Not the very next day after you run the search blindly, especially if the stock price rises the next day. The importance of confirmation. I would stay away from sale. I'm not sh quite sure what this was. Uh, I don't think it's a buyout, but boy, the stock price uh, skyrocketed there on really high volume. I would stay away from a stock like this to short. Next one, UEC, new five-month high here. Again, I'm going to look for a sign of a reversal. Don't get it. There's my bearish Harami. I'm seeing a lot of bearish Haramis around this time. There's my follow through. Price is moving in my direction. Good opportunity. What happened afterwards? Yeah, I think there was some good opportunity for some profits there. Okay, let's go back to April 12th. And the last one, go, go. New five month high, some pretty good volume. I hesitate shorting it at, the, at this point. I'm going to wait for follow through the next day, or at least for price to break down below at least that day's low, and the stock price continues to rise. Stock price continues to rise. I'm going to wait for a reversal. Looks like I got it. Now I'm ready to initiate that short position. You can see RT trending lower as well. It's still above one, but again, running out of gas here, especially, guys, with the market behaving the way it did at the end of April. I always come back to that. What is the market doing? That is going to dictate the direction that we take, whether we're long, whether we're short. Okay, and the last thing I want to show you guys is very easy within the VectorVest program to actually go out and short. We've gone through steps one through three already, right? So step number four, initiate a short stock position. And within VectorVest, very, very simple. I'm going to just click on stream here. Let's look at the current time. Doesn't really matter. I'm not going to go out and short the stock. I just want to show you guys how easy it is. First, to short a stock within the VectorVest program, you do need 
to open a brokerage account with one of our partnered brokers. So if I right click on a stock, doesn't matter, Phoenix Motor, you can see we're partnered with Ally, TradeStation, Interactive Brokers. Open up an account with them if you haven't already done so, and then link that account to the VectorVest program. If you need help doing that, just give our support department a call. Once you do that, you have the ability now to buy and short within that account right from the VectorVest program. So if I go Trade Now Interactive Brokers, brings up our trade ticket, it's very, very simple. The action is to sell short. The quantity is how many shares you want to borrow. Again, I would use a limit order. So I'll set my limit order. I like to just split the difference between the bid and the ask. I'll go closer to the ask at 747. Click on preview orders, and that's it. You click on place orders at the bottom. It sends that order to your broker, and you will have initiated a short stock position with just a few clicks. Now, if you get a message up at the top of this order preview window that says that it's an error message that says that, you know, this stock is not able, you're not able to short it. Your broker doesn't have the inventory. That's usually what the message says. So you just can't go out and short that stock. You just look at the next one on the list. But very, very easy here within the VectorVest program to initiate a short stock position as long as you are connected to one of our partner brokers. So folks, hope you enjoyed tonight's presentation. If the market continues to struggle here throughout the remainder of this year, we have to be able to make money. We believe that you can make money no matter if the market's rising or falling. The key is to follow our VectorVest guidance and our market timing signals to ensure that you are on the right side of the market. So have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see everybody soon.